Hello, hello, federal employees. Welcome back to another great episode of Plan Your Federal Benefits with yours truly, Dallin Haas, financial planner serving you as federal employees. It is great to have you here with me today. Today is another great questions and answers episode where I answer your questions that you guys submit in the link in the description of the show notes wherever you are consuming this. There is a link that takes you to my website where you can submit questions that I will definitely take the best ones that I get and discuss them, give you the answers that you need here, right here on my YouTube channel and my podcast. So without further ado, let's jump right into this week's handful of questions. This question says, what happens if, hey, alert, if you're a special provisions employees, you're gonna like this one, right? You're gonna like this one a lot because I know you guys always want more content about your stuff. Well, this is touching you. Okay, what happens if you leave one of your special first positions, your special provisions, prior to the 20 year mark and take a regular first position? Do you still calculate those special years at 1.7%? and all after that at 1%? Great question. Okay, let's dig in. So, again, let me make this really clear. The rules, the retirement rules for special provisions FERS, which is law enforcement, air traffic controllers, firefighters, they're slightly different than traditional FERS. So if you're traditional FERS, this isn't gonna apply perfectly, but it's good to know what's out there. So when you're online and you're reading information, you can recognize, okay, this is that, this is what I have, so that you know for you, you can keep them all straight. So let's dig in, dig in a little bit. As a special provision, so air traffic controller, firefighter, um, that those under those special rules, you have to have at least 20 years of service to get a increased multiplier for your pension. And, and, and if you do, your pension can be significantly higher. I have other videos that dig into exactly how that works, so definitely check those out if you are interested. Now, what this gentleman is saying, hey, if I don't make it quite to 20 years under the special provisions, can I still get the increased pension for the years that I did spend under those special provisions? And then every year that I, that I spend after that, um, will be at the lower amount. That's basically what he's asking. And unfortunately, for this one, it doesn't lean in your favor, right? For, to be under the special provisions retirement rules, you have to have at least 20 years under those rules as a special provisions employees. Once you hit the 20 years, you are eligible for the special provisions retirement, okay? And at that point, if you wanna go take a different um, position, whatever, you're welcome to, it won't affect um, your ability to get that type of retirement. That being said, before that point, before 20 years of special provisions service, then you have to have at least 20 to get that increased pension. Now, there's one, there, there, there's a few exceptions, but they're very, very nuanced, and they're very, very um, uncommon. Okay, um, and so I'm not going to discuss them here, but as a general rule, um, you have to have at least 20 years as a general rule. Um, and so definitely if this applies to you, dig in deeper. Like I said, there, this is nuanced and there's lots of other things. As a general rule, you have to have at least 20 years to get that special provisions pension bump, which is significant, right? So if this does apply to you, you definitely want to dig in um, dig into it. I, I'm not going to dig into it too deep here because it would be a 30 minute rabbit hole. <laughs> okay. So we're going to keep it simple. Um, but um, it's definitely something to think about. So this is a great question. But we're going to jump on to question number two. Question number two is, hey, can you please discuss the pros and cons of rolling over the TSP into an IRA, then to a Roth IRA in order to minimize the tax burden when you withdraw it in retirement or any other tax strategies? I'm trying to decide if that's a good strategy or not since an IRA would cost me more to have it managed along with other potential potential problems. Okay, these are great questions. You guys have some great questions, by the way, about retirement, about your benefits, so keep them coming and I'm happy to answer them. So um, I've made a number of videos on TSP versus IRA, some of the pros and cons, um, and so if you want to dig deeper, um, there's of course full videos on it. But I'll give you the, um, the main points, okay? So the TSP is a great tool. It's a great tool. Um, and IRAs are great tools too. 
just a matter of finding, okay, what are their advantages and disadvantages? Because they're different, right? They're different. There's no, you know, better or worse. It's just different. And it depends what you're trying to do. A huge advantage of the TSP is its simplicity. It's simple. You're often familiar with it by the time you retire, right? So in retirement, it's often pretty nice to just keep your money in the TSP. If you're familiar with the funds, how to invest it and sort of things like that, it, it's comfortable. And so that can be a great reason to keep it where it's at. Um, also, the fees and the investments are, are very low. Um, can you find funds or investments on the private side or let's say in an IRA that are comparable? Yeah, you can. Um, it's just you got to wade through um, hundreds of other thousands of other options when it comes to investments. And so um, is it possible? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. And people do it all the time. Um, it's just a matter of what you want to deal with, right? Um, also, it depends if you're retiring early, let's say before 59 and a half, um, there's some definite reasons to keep your money in the TSP. Um, again, it's nuanced because if you retire at 55 or later, you can often take your money out of the traditional TSP without penalties. Um, but again, the, the, there's some nuances there. So make sure before you pull any money out <laughs> to, um, to make sure things make sense for you. So um, there's lots of pros and cons. When it, this, this gentleman is talking about taxes. Um, and um, the Roth, a Roth IRA basically is asking, should I take the TSP, the traditional TSP that he has, roll that into a traditional IRA, and then from there put money into a Roth IRA? And, and that's a great question. Um, and obviously it depends on your tax situation. But um, for many federal employees, at least at some point during their retirement or even their career sometimes, they're going to have points where their taxable income is going to be a little lower than it might be in the future, right? Whether it's at your beginning, beginning of your career or the beginning of your retirement before you take Social Security. I mean, there's a number of different spots where it's common where your taxable income may be a little lower. And during those years, it may make a ton of sense to move some money from the pre-tax buckets of your traditional TSP and traditional IRAs into a Roth IRA. Now, you can't move a traditional TSP money straight into a Roth TSP money. You can't do that, right? So what, what people do often is they move their traditional TSP into a, a traditional IRA and then from there move it to a Roth IRA. Now, when you move money from uh, the traditional IRA to a Roth IRA, that's a taxable event, right? And so you want to be careful not to do those in too large of amounts. So let's say you got 500 grand in your TSP. If you move all that to a normal IRA and then to a Roth IRA, then that can be, that's a 500 grand of extra taxable income that's going to hit your, your tax return in one year, which you don't want to do. So whenever you're thinking about this strategy, make sure you understand the impl implications, but it can be a powerful tool, like this gentleman is saying, to, okay, where's my taxable income now? And where's it going to be in the, maybe the later years of retirement, right? And does it make sense to hurry and get some money into the Roth account so they can grow tax-free for the rest of your retirement. Now, one advantage of a Roth IRA, even above a Roth TSP, is that they're not subject to RMDs or required minimum distribution. So at age 72, Roth IRAs, you don't have to take money out. Um, the other retirement accounts, like your traditional TSP, your Roth TSP, and your traditional IRA, those are all subject to RMDs, right? So that can be another advantage of keeping or getting your money into a Roth IRA. But again, there's tax consequences if you're converting it over from um, the traditional pre-tax side. Um, so I don't have an answer for you, whoever submitted this question, a specific one. Uh, yes, you should do it exactly this way. But I'm just trying to kind of walk you through some things to think about, right? Where there's a number of factors. Um, and so hopefully you can kind of piece things together for you, for your situation and say, okay, what makes sense for me? And, and it, it seems like you're referencing that... Um, you're gonna, it's gonna cost you more to have your money in an IRA um, to have it managed. Um, and that's a good question. If you're working with a financial advisor and if they charge a management fee, yeah, it, it will cost more, right? More than what a, the TSP will cost. And, and my thoughts there, I mean, full disclosure, I'm a financial advisor and I often help manage people's IRAs. So maybe I'm the most biased person or unbiased, however you wanna look at it. Um, I think it depends what um, the advisor is doing for you, if it makes it worth it or not. Because um, 
if if it's going to cost you a bunch more money to u- to use an IRA, it may it may totally be worth it for the tax consequences, and maybe you do want the assistance of the advisor to actually help you manage it, actually do the trades for you, actually have it come up with a strategy that makes a ton of sense for you, whether it's tax wise or investment wise, to make your money, make sure you don't run out of money in retirement. That can be extremely valuable for you. Um, it just depends what your advisor is providing, right? If he is just opening an IRA for you and not really providing much advice and charging a fee, um, is that worth it? Well, I don't know. That's up to you. It's up to you depending on your situation, right? Um, so some things to think about, right? Um, every situation has a lot of nuances. And so I don't know exactly the situation of the person asked, asking this question, but that is something to think about. And so um, in short, a Roth IRA has a ton of advantages, but of course you got to you, t- you typically have to pay taxes if you're pulling money out of pre-tax accounts to get into a Roth IRA, and you want to be careful not to do too much um, in certain years. But doing some year to year, maybe to fill up certain tax brackets and not push you over, but fill it up to the top, um, can be a great strategy to do some Roth conversions, is what we call them, um, into some some tax-free accounts. So you have some flexibility later where if you, let's say, have a higher taxable income year, you can pull more money out of the Roth accounts so that um, you can keep your, your taxable income lower. I definitely recommend having some money in both if possible, if that makes sense for you, just so in retirement you have some levers to control your taxable income to some degree. So again, those are some things to think about. I hope that was helpful. And I again, if you have any questions about your retirement, your benefits, In the description below, there's a link. Submit them. I'd love to see them. And I'll definitely try to address as many as I possibly can. And until next time, I hope you have an incredible day.